Before you continue, we just want to point out to our viewers that in four minutes they will resume the count. An 11.30 launch, weather permitting, the count will resume in four minutes. Keith, uh, picking up on what you were saying, uh, are you satisfied with this? Is it adequate? Well, we've had a, um, we've had what we consider to be a rather, uh, a very, a very extensive test program. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular redesigned joint has been tested uh, uh, on approximately 40 full-scale pressurization tests. Uh, some of those under very adverse conditions with intentional flaws built into the hardware in order to penetrate the hardware to the secondary and the primary O-rings and demonstrate their functionality. Uh, there are other features to the basic design, namely the, the, the internal insulation that sits over the joint has also been redesigned to incorporate what we call a J-seal, which under the augmentation of the chamber pressure and ignition locks the insulation in place and in fact prevents the pressure and hot gases from really ever getting to the uh, O-ring seals. The J-seal directs the gases away. That's right, that's right. But we have run tests uh, in, this, in this 40 test that I mentioned where we flawed all of that system and allowed the hot gases and the high pressure uh, to reach the O-rings. So we feel quite confident by demonstrating our redundancy and primary functions that we have a good system. Thank you. We're going to pause and we'll be right back at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Countdown scheduled to resume any second now. Let's listen in to launch control. Weathers report. Uh, CDR, we copy. We need a repeat on weather. Yeah, he's down in the head. Cape Weather, uh, launch director, you want to summarize the, the current op again, please, sir? Roger, sir. All right, stand by. Cape Weather, you're very weak. Can you, uh, Try another column. Well, you're very weak, but uh, readable. Uh, uh, Discovery, can you copy Cape Weather? Uh, negative. Uh, would you just relay uh, his report, please? Okay, Rick. Well, what uh, what we've got in the local area is uh, winds are, are northeasterly, and they're uh, they're less than 10 knots. Current weather conditions, we got some scattered uh, low stuff below 5,000. We got some showers offshore that are topping out around 14,000. Uh, none of that is within 10 miles. Okay, thanks very much. Go ahead, Cape Weather. Roger, sir. We have some showers in within about uh, 10 to 11 miles here to the west of us. Yeah. I copy, and they're moving to the west. Okay, and you're still uh, go Cape Weather. ATD, ITD, 212. Go ITD. Uh, C-16973, hold, fire system is available. I copy. Payload, are you ready for uh, count resumption? We're ready for count resumption now. We need an AT-0. Okay, oh. copy. Okay, uh, this launch director, why don't you set that for... Uh, we come out of the hold in approximately three minutes. I copy, and um, TLS, NTD. Would you uh, set the clock to come out at uh, 1528 GMT? I copy. And uh, about three minutes, uh, 10 seconds for their bounce. How do you expect that? To know what's going on if you keep talking? This is Shuttle Launch Control. Uh, we have just heard Launch Director Bob Seek receive a go from all elements of the launch team, including Bob Crippen, who is the uh, Deputy Director of the National Space Transportation System and the head of the mission management team. Uh, we'll be picking up the count uh, down clock at 11.28 at the T-minus nine minute point, which would give us a liftoff time at 11.37 uh, Eastern Daylight Time this morning. During this period, recorders which document the operation of the final minutes of the countdown 
and the flight recorders have been turned on. Just one minute before the countdown resumes, the OASIS payload in the pay orbiter bay will be activated to report its findings at the high bit rate. The OASIS instrumentation is designed to determine the environment of the payload bays, such as the effects of temperature, pressure, vibration, uh, and will be used for the design of future payloads and upper stages. And we'd like you to consider us uh, closing our visors a little bit later in the count just to uh, lessen the probability of getting that PPO2 alarm. Okay, we copy. Uh, do you have a recommended time? Two minutes. Two minutes? We copy. That's firm. Two minutes. We copy. A minute and a half away from picking up the countdown, uh, we've just had a request from the crew that they close their visors a little later in the uh, the count at the T-minus two-minute point. Tony Clark, you're at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. How's it looking over there? Bernie, everyone is excited here. The news that we just had that everything appears to be go for a launch here in just about uh, 10 minutes or so has uh, brought a little bit of excitement, both at Mission Control and here in Building 9A. This is the building where a lot of the simulators are. We have people, NASA employees, that have been standing around monitors. These are, are monitors that show what is called NASA Select. It's Test. pictures of the, uh, the launch you hear from Hugh Harris, things that are Test. going on Test. at the Cape. People have been gathered around those all morning long, waiting for word whether or not there was going to be a launch. There was kind of a, a feeling of um, a little disappointment uh, a short time ago when weather was holding things up, but the news that we had just a short time ago has kind of frightened everyone's spirits, not only here, but in all the buildings, I think, around the uh, Johnson Space Center. Over about a block or so away at Mission Control, people have been getting ready for now more about five and a half hours. They've been manning the consoles. They've had a dump of data They've had data moved from the Kennedy Space Center here to the Johnson Space Center so that the computers here match the computers at the Kennedy Space Center. The information... We just got word they are starting to... Uh, starting the countdown again. It's... Uh, the countdown is resumed less than nine minutes before launch, and that's the kind of thing that these people... In fact... Uh, the people all around here at the Johnson Space Center have been looking forward to. I see smiles behind me. There are smiles in mission control uh, as everyone gets gets ready for this uh, this launch. It is something that the people here have been waiting two and a half years for. I remember some of the astronauts and many of the people at the Kennedy Space Center and the Johnson Space Center have been saying they didn't want to get uh, too excited. Let's uh, let's go now to Hugh Harris. And uh, flight OTC, I'd like to have you proceed with the transmission of the uh, stored program command. Coming up, the eight minute point, T minus eight minutes and counting. Flight OTC. The orbiter test director has requested that Houston send the stored program commands, which is the final update on antenna management and frequency changes. This ensures that the orbiter has the latest information to speak to various ground tracking stations as it circles the Earth. Uh, Roger, uh, flight, uh, proceed with transmission of the stored program command. T minus seven minutes, 30 seconds and counting, and the ground launch sequencer has started retracting the orbiter crew access arm. This is the walkway used by the astronauts to enter the orbiter. In case of an emergency, the arm can be placed back into position within about 15 seconds. Okay, we copy. And tense. Intense anticipation picking up. You can feel it here. We're going to pause and we'll be right back to the Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> 